Hi friends, so today is Wednesday, the 23rd of August, and I harvested some flowering basils to keep them from going to seed, and they have been a little bit bitter for me, so maybe because my soil isn't very nutritious, I'm not sure, um, or it's under stress, so I just harvest them for, for tea. Typically, I put it in salads and um, in pasta, but it's been kind of bitter this year. So I harvested a bunch of strawberries and a lot of green beans. Wow, that's like a nice handful right there. In fact, my hands can't go around all of them. And then um, some okra. And... I found this at the last minute and it was all coiled up under all the leaves and vines but just before that I found this giant one or meaning cucumber um, and I had looked in the same spot three times and when I looked the fourth time I, hap I happened to bend down to get something and I saw this whopping big thing. I mean, it's bigger than my forearm. It really is. It's bigger than my forearm. Yeah, it's longer. It's from my hand to my elbow. And then I've got another one that I found on accident. And another one. So two different cucumbers that I didn't see along with this third one, the Armenian cucumber. I did spot that one. I chose that one first because I thought it was the biggest until I found these one, two, three, and four others by accident. So now that I've harvested everything, I gotta put them in the fridge, except for these, I'll eat them fresh and I'll, make, I'll wash these and make tea out of it. And I have a special video about what I'm, I just recently did to my green beans and my okra, which I will share with you. Thank you for watching, and please like, subscribe, share for more tips and more uh, uses for different vegetables and stuff in your garden. Good morning, friends. So, my son helped me clear out this uh, concrete garden bed. It used to have fennel, cilantro, lettuce, and before that it had a lot of brassicas that I had to pull out because I had harlequin bugs. And that is their primary um, crop of choice. But if we run out of brassicas, they'll eat everything else. So. I um, decided not to grow any uh, brassicas earlier in the year, give, give it a season off, probably more than a season, and hopefully they won't come back. I should find another bed to put them in, but um, currently all my beds are filled. Currently all my beds are filled, so here I... Uh, you can't see them because I stuck some seeds in the ground and then I well I put some nice soil then amended it with soil and then I sowed some seeds and then I stuck this hardware cloth on top so things won't go in there to dig around I know better because as soon as there's anything any type of bare space cats will come and dig and use it as a restroom or um, just critters will come in here to look for uh, bugs and stuff to eat so um, we'll see if they grow because that soil was quite strong and I used one bag it was a, a green bag that I used in my strawberry towers and it was so so strong the the things that were breaking down in it so what I sewed um, this this particular one was not in that particular bed tender sweet carrot I grew it in a bed in my enclosure because I had a little bit of space and it was kind of shady over there 
and hopefully they will come up because they need to stay the seedlings the seeds need to stay moist and I've always had trouble um, growing carrots and then here is the Long Island Brussels sprouts and I grew that in this garden bed let me show you so I have a little area I used to have a fire ring here and I put soil in it and um, this is the bed that had all that huge overgrowing nasturtium in it and in fact as you can see the nasturtiums are coming back now that it's cooling off uh, at the last minute I stuck this squash plant in here so we'll see if we would get anything it finally made a bloom and it finally grew out for the longest time it was like two leaves or three leaves and then I gave some corn to my sister thinking she would divide it out and plant them and she didn't so they're stunted so they look like they're gonna grow uh, they're going to grow but then now they kind of stayed in this little one foot tall size and by the time I got it back I um, I felt like the roots were too tangled up and that it could, they couldn't be separated so I just kind of threw them in here to see what would happen so we'll find out mm. together and then over here I have I stuck those Brussels sprout seeds in here, all in there, so we'll see how many come up, because I figured with this um, African Nunum basil that, oh my gosh, it overwintered and it did fantastic. Um, so I figured if I grow the Brussels sprouts, there'll be a tall plant back there in front of the basil. And I have a little bit of pineapple sage, if you can see the little red flowers popping up. I threw a few cuttings in there so that I can have those um, because my original one died. So I'm glad I have a couple backups. So yeah, I think it'll do just fine in this little corner here. So next, I grew some China Rose Radish. No, I tried to grow this a couple times. I tried to grow this a couple times. Once in um, new soil that was kind of poor um, in nutrients, and but I didn't know what the soil would do to, if things would grow in them. So I had to try, and it didn't come up. Then I threw it into this other area, and something dug it up. So that's where I learned to put the hardware cloth to cover whatever I want to keep. So I threw this in that new concrete bed, as well as French breakfast radish. <clears throat> and because these are fast growing, I'm gonna know if that soil is good or not. So I stuck radishes in that, in that new bed. Specialty beets. Um, sorry. Touchstone gold, beta vulgaris. So I heard that touchstone gold golden beets do not taste as earthy as red beets. So I'm glad I, I bought those. Harris model parsnip. Tried to grow this ages ago, but I didn't manage to get. Oh, I think I might have gotten one, but um, it's kind of new to me. I've never really eaten parsnips nor turnips. So I grew those as well. I'm gonna try to taste what they taste like, the differences between them. Leeks, those are old seeds, so I hope they germinate. And black nebula carrot. These are newer seeds, so I expect them to come up. But then, like I said, I'm not good with carrots. Little finger carrots. These are old seeds, so if they don't germinate, then I'm not going to cry about it. And then some sunflower evening sun mix in the corners of the bed so that I could get some flowers. So that's what I grew in that concrete garden bed. And if the things come up, 
then that's great. If not, I'll have staggered a little bit of time. And in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to start some brassicas um, so that I can um, have some greens over the winter. Let me show you what I'm going to grow. So I am harvesting things this morning and every once in a while I get freaked out or scared, but not really scared, just startled that there's wildlife in my garden. So last time I had a garden bed that um, when I went deeper into the garden bed to look at my plants, I found a lizard and a lizard skin. Well, the skin that it left behind, it's left off, it was really long, so I thought it was a snake. It scared me, but here it is. Here's, um, so this time it's a, a different occasion, and here it is, real long, you see it? So long that you would think it's a snake, but I believe that's a lizard. Yes, I see the leg. So it is a lizard, but very similar to a snake, right? <laughs> so this is in my Armenian cucumber. And that's fine because I eat bugs. So I do not mind lizards whatsoever. They're actually running around everywhere all the time. And I love it. Hi friends, so I've saved a lot of brassica seeds. These are collards and kale seeds that were probably cross-pollinated with one another. So they've got a different kind of breed or something like that. Um, so I don't care about that because um, I'm, I got a ton of seeds from it. And what I'm going to do is plant them in these pots. I've got six pots here. And what I'm going to do is plant the brassica seeds in here, several um, seedlings per pot, and it'll be my way of feeding my chickens so that it'll decrease the cost of feed. I'm going to probably do uh, 14, 14 pots eventually, so um, every two weeks I'll just, uh, what I'll do is I'll stick one per day into the chicken run and they'll just eat eat at it till there's just a stem and then I'll move on to the next one and then the next one so for two weeks I'll have a cycle of two weeks worth of pots and they'll just graze on the growing living brassica and I will also give them feed but they love brassica seeds uh, brassica leaves and it's a great way to um, have them get some greenery and vitamins from that just from my seeds that I've kept. Hi friends, I just wanted to show you that my gardenia has turned out so much more full and green after the rain. It was suffering a little bit when there was all that heat and everything and the flowers didn't make it very long. The flowers would pop up and they bloom for a day or so and then they would just kind of turn brown and wither and die even though I watered it a bunch in here and that rain just made it look so lush. This Armenian cucumber bush ended up growing so lush I'm now climbing it up this trellis so it's nice and full and it's providing me with anywhere between five to ten fruits per day and it's so productive and I just kind of keep pulling up the new vines and propping it up higher and higher and in the middle of them by around nine or ten mid-morning there are a ton of honeybees buzzing around it so it's already got more fruit all over I've harvested a ton today I'll show you in a bit my green beans have been pumping out so many green beans, a handful every day, and I love it. I'm, I'm so happy I grew this, and in this way too, it's so easy to harvest. So as you can see, I still have a few, and I'm just going to let them get like beefier 
uh, longer, provide more food. Um, so I've already harvested the thicker ones today and I'm waiting for this to mature a little bit more and um, it's so it's still going strong I'm hoping till you know the end of summer it's so productive and let me show you the latest um, I have cucumelons that oh goodness they're on the other side but here's an example so it's finally getting large enough to eat instead of these tiny, tiny little cucumbers, what do you call it? The little tiny flowers. <clears throat> it's actually making melons and I can't wait. I've got two cantaloupe here and a watermelon that's way back there. I should pull off some of these dead vines. It's getting too hot for the Kajari melons. Already the feral squirrels and other animals and birds have been eating on my new sunflowers. I had the bicolor. It was so pretty. Kind of a little bit disappointing that they didn't have a long shelf life. Uh, at this time of year, they just get attacked. This is what it's supposed to look like. So that there is a huge blossom. It's so pretty. It's in the melon family. So um, any guesses as to what it is? <laughs> I've never been able to grow it successfully. I grew a little seedling and it would die. So this is the first year. I would, I've just looked at it and I thought, oh, I'm not going to get anything out of this plant this year. Um, and to my surprise, I spotted this, this one and that one. So those are my uh, lufa, and I can't wait to get the entire big lufa to use because I plan on using it on dishes so I don't have to buy too many scrubbies and I don't know it might be a little bit rough for the body but maybe for feet or something. So friends, it's been so hot, um, but I needed to start my fall garden. So my son helped me clean out this bed and then I added new soil and I placed the seeds that, um, that I said like radish and all the root vegetables, turnips, turnips, parsnips, carrots, and so far the carrots do not look too hot. I got some weed grass coming through. Oh, so annoying already. Um, I put this uh, hardware cloth on top so that things don't come in and dig like cats and squirrels and whatever. And um, it just gives my seedlings a chance. Oh no, I forgot. It's, I've got to pull this through before it pulls out my little seedlings. Oh, oh no, right there. Oh. I lost a couple. Oh well. I guess I gotta devise another plan. Okay. So I just pulled up the hardware cloth because my seedlings were growing through it. And um, so hopefully they have a good chance of growing without something digging in here. Um, so I came out here to water my plants and to harvest. I've already harvested, but it's already getting hot. And before you know it, you get um, bit all over by mosquitoes. So I'm gonna hurry this up. And um, I just wanted to show you the radishes are growing fantastically. So I don't think I'm gonna be getting any more corn. They're stunted. They, they were in a pot for far too long and I couldn't separate them out. So I just stuck it in here thinking that it will and it's not doing too great. So mm, at least I will have something to mulch away. Hi friends. So this is my harvest for today, August 29th. I have a, a few strawberries from my green stock tower. Some okra. I don't know if you can see them. Some okra. And then I, 
big handful of green beans, bigger than my hands, and then a, a ton, a ton of Armenian cucumbers. They're very productive, very good. And I got some pineapple sage that I'm going to make into a tea, wash it up and, and have tea with it. And here's the African Nunum basil, and it has a nice scent. I'm going to make a tea out of it as well. It grows really well, if you can see right here. It just grows really well, and then I stuck some pineapple sage in here, so that's coming, um, it's blooming, and it has a nice scent. Oh, wow, it smells like pineapples. So nice. Anyhow. It's very productive. Um, I'm going to water my plants and then get going inside because it is so, so hot. Um, yesterday was 100 degrees. Today is going to be not far behind, very close. Let me see how many Armenian cucumbers I have. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten cucumbers. So as each day goes by, my brassicas are growing. They're either collard greens or um, some kind of brassica for sure, um, or kale. So we'll see when they grow um, because I mixed the seeds up, I didn't label them. Um, or they could have crossed, but either way these are going to be used as chicken feed. So I'll just grow it. Um, tall and then it'll be like a brassica tree and then I'll just take one pot and give it to the chickens remove it the next day put another pot and remove it the next day and put another pot and they'll just keep munching on it and it'll decrease my feed that I need and they love brassicas friends from my harvest as you can see I have a ton of my green beans those are some store-bought onions uh, I do sometimes put in my tiny little onions and um, I'm normally you typically want to cook the onions but I had already cut um, typically you only cook the green beans in here first minus the onions but I happen to have it already cut from the last time I washed and cut my vegetables so it was kind of mixed in there so I'm cooking it together typically you want to cook the green beans first because they take longer to cook and the onions don't go in there right away now I'm going to make room for the meat in my stir fry because that's going to need to cook well now I've added my meat some salt and some black pepper and some garlic and I'm going to let this cook up try not to mix them up together with the meat because you want it to cook really well so that's what I'm doing so I have the garlic in here because um, you want the aromatics of the garlic to mix in with the meat so that you don't just have like the meat smell permeating. Um, it smells better when it's got the alley with it, the garlic. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to come back when the meat is more cooked up and then I'm going to mix the green beans with it and then I'm going to add my newer my newer um, chopped onions and my okra because those don't take too long to cook. So I have added my okra and I'm still getting the turkey to cook up. It's getting less pink. Now I'm going to add my onion. It's only been like 30 seconds or a minute. 
now I've added my onions and I'm keeping the, the meat still on that side so that it'll cook up and I've been constantly stirring this side where the vegetables are. And just like I've learned from uh, different chefs, every time you add something, you try to season it so that everything gets seasoned. Otherwise, if you just add the seasoning to like one ingredient or two ingredients, the other items don't get the seasoning as well. So now that I've added the onion and okra, I'm going to let it cook for like a few minutes and the meat will further cook. It's pretty much cooked because I used ground turkey. Um, some people don't like ground turkey. You could um, cook it with shrimp, with, in which case the shrimp takes a really short amount of time. So it would be one of the ingredients you put in at the end. And then um, if you, you could also use pork or some other meat, but that's what we like to eat. Um, it's a healthier meat for us, and I don't have to spend time chopping it up mostly, uh, but um, I try to make it, all my dishes, all my entrees, I try to make it chock full of vegetables because um, that'll fill you up and it's free calories and it's good for you and okra it thickens up the sauce and also um, it, it lends a good benefit of being good for your abdomen being good for your gut bacteria so I like to cook with okra and this year I really felt like growing it and if I'm going to grow it, I'm definitely going to eat it. So you can garnish with some green onions, spring onions at the end if you'd like, but I have plenty of greens and plenty of alliums. Um, I just don't want to go out in the heat to get some green onions. And also you could spice it up to the, fla the amount that you like, we do it afterwards with sriracha um, so kids can have it and then adults can have their their spice level but you could cut up chili peppers to throw in there as well